Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, August 1st, 2014, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, the American people shout down the GOP leadership on immigration, melting down the Capitol Hill phone lines. Then, will a pandemic or the threat of one be used to create martial law? And... 911, what's your emergency? It's my ex who's trying to break in. The anti-Second Amendment ad backfires. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. Stay calm. You just broke in the door. You need to come now. While Congress was set to vote on House Speaker John Boehner's border bill yesterday, it was a bill that most there in Congress thought was going to actually do more harm than good, but they wanted to vote on something, so it would seem like they were doing anything to help this immigration crisis before their five-week vacation. However, America called in, melted down the phone lines on Capitol Hill, demanded their voices to be heard, and then this led to leading conservatives sitting down with representatives of the House leadership to go ahead and hammer out the outline of a revised plan, take it back to the bargaining table. Now, this was largely due to Tea Party conservatives expressing concerns on three main topics, the Deferred Action for Children Arrivals policy, the 2008 Wilberforce Law, and asylum. Now, Representative Michelle Bachman said that there was no question it was the power of the grassroots pressure on moderates that forced going back to the bargaining table, working on this revised plan. So it just goes to show the power that we do have when we raise our voices, demand our voices be heard, and a simple phone call calling in to your representatives. Now, Congress has planned to stay late on Friday to go ahead and vote on this revised plan. But of course, it's kind of playing politics because nothing can really happen with this since the Senate has already adjourned. So basically what the Republicans are hoping is that by them passing this bill or voting on this bill, that it's going to put the pressure now on the Senate and say, see, you guys didn't do anything before you went on vacation. But of course, Democrats just probably adjourned knowing that Obama was going to go ahead and use his pen anyway. Now, while Congress is going to be out on vacation for five weeks, this continual flow of illegal immigrants is just continuing to rush the border. And we actually have exclusive footage down there at Carnes City, Texas today. They are already being bussed into their new detention facility that has beautiful flat screen TVs and barber shops and swimming pools and all sorts of lovely amenities for these residents of the suites. Now, mind you, Carn City is right near San Antonio, Texas, which on any given night has about 3,000 homeless people in the city. So, of course, those homeless people aren't being bused to these detention facilities and giving a nice hot meal and flat screen television. But, of course, this is just becoming the new norm. Now, we've reported on so many of these stories of how illegal aliens are basically living the American dream while people like the homeless there in San Antonio and all across the country are basically suffering. And coming up later in the show, David Knight is going to be speaking with a car salesman who reveals just another one of these ways that uh, illegal aliens are kind of bypassing the law, living the American dream, racking up all kinds of new cars and things like that by using fake Social Security numbers. Now, back to Obama's magic pen. He signed another executive order today, and this one is going to allow for the detention of Americans with respiratory illnesses. Now, of course, this is all coming on the wake of that Ebola scare, and this executive order is titled Revised List of Quarantinable Communicable Diseases, and it amends an ex executive order that was already in place, passed by George W. Bush in 2003. It allows for the apprehension, detention, or conditional release of individuals to prevent you know, the transmission or spread of communicable diseases. Well, Obama's amendment will allow for the detention of Americans who just display acute respiratory synd syndrome. So with the exception of influenza, anyone can be forcibly detained by medical authorities. So quarantining of people suspected to have Ebola is obviously a wonderful idea. Now, as we highlighted earlier this week, the Centers for Disease Control already has measures in place for dealing with an outbreak of a communicable disease, it'll allow for the quarantine of well persons who do not show symptoms of the disease. So obviously, they are already prepping themselves to have the authority 
to quarantine Americans. And why is that? Well, now they are bringing this highly deadly disease for which there is no cure to the West because that's so intelligent. At least one, but possibly two, U.S. citizens with Ebola are due to fly from West Africa to Atlanta sometime within the next few days. Now, this is Dr. Kent Brantley and Nancy Wrightbull. They are said to be in grave condition, and they are going to be treated with an experimental drug once they get there. Obviously, Ebola is a highly contagious, communicable disease. Bringing those people to the United States or the UK or Germany, wherever they're bringing them in Europe, it's not going to alter the fact that 90% of people who come in contact with this disease will die. But what it will do by transporting them elsewhere is increasing the risk of the virus spreading. Now, these patients have Ebola Zare, which is a condition where all bodily secretions are infected. This condition causes diarrhea and vomiting, a high fever that causes the patient to sweat and bleeding from every orifice. Now, these symptoms are not going to be conveniently just stopped because the patient is transferred to the United States or Germany or anywhere else. And of course, it's highly dangerous considering they have to be transported through the airport, on helicopters, planes, on the ambulance. They're going to have to be taken from the ambulance through the hospital into the isolation unit. Of course, anyone who is uh, responsible for decontaminating the plane or the ambulance that they were riding in, if they miss one drop of any bodily fluid, they're all going to be at risk of being contaminated with this. And the virus has been shown to remain active outside of the body in dry or liquid form for three days. So this is just one of those things that we, we like to call here madness. It's totally madness. Now, obviously, you want to have sympathy for these patients, but why would you want to risk spreading this disease? There is no cure. Now, John Rappaport writes that we should be cautious about this Ebola outbreak morphing into hysteria. Here is one predictable outcome. He says at clinics and hospitals, frightened people who arrive with what are labeled early signs of Ebola will now be labeled as probable cases. The symptoms are very flu-like, fever, chill, sore throat, cough, headache. And of course, the news media is going to love this killer germ. And as I mentioned earlier, Obama has already signed an executive order that will be able to give the authority to detain these probable cases. Now, the PSYOP warriors, people are going to say global pandemic every 15 seconds. The news is going to report how all of these cases of people, you know, with these early signs of Ebola. And Rappaport writes that this is to exert control over the population and obtain compliance. Stay indoors, don't travel, avoid contact with people who might be ill. Every so-called pandemic is a test. How well will the population follow orders? And of course, the World Health Organization will shut down the airports. No plane should take off or land, keep the ships in harbor. And Rappaport warned about this way back in 1987. He says medical propaganda ops are, in the long run, the most dangerous. They appear to be neutral, they have no political banners, and they claim to be science. And for these reasons, they can accomplish the goals of overt fascism without arousing suspicion. And of course, today in New York City, they are running the largest ever surprise emergency drill there. Now, we reported last year about them, them testing to see how fast any airborne diseases would travel through this the subway system, but now they have a massive emergency preparedness drill that is taking place at 30 facilities across the city, and it's testing the delivery of emergency medications in the event of a large-scale public health emergency or a biological attack like anthrax. Now, it's the largest surprise drill in the city's history, and participants weren't given any notice of this. They wanted to test the real, actual um, emergency response. But never fear, because the U.S. government is already planning to take care of you. They've already been prepping for this Ebola outbreak. They say they're going to begin testing on people an experimental Ebola vaccine as early as September. Now, the National Institutes of Health's Infectious Disease Unit is working with the FDA to put the vaccine into trial as quickly as possible. Now, what could possibly go wrong? We've already heard, you know, the experimental H1N1 was causing a lot of pregnant women to have uh, spontaneous abortions. 
and that was in the thousands here with H1N1. When we know the flu vaccines, they cause the flu or flu-like symptoms. So could this experimental Ebola vaccine cause Ebola-like symptoms? Or is it basically going to be like the opening scene of The Walking Dead or any other zombie movie you've ever watched ever in the history of zombie movies? Now, coming up, more on the pending police state. And then we speak exclusively with the whistleblower who reveals how illegal aliens are duping the system to get free cars while you and I are busting our butts just so we can keep making payments on our jalopies. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure these sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee, and it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great-tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. This is Alex Jones for InfoWarsLife.com. The latest in preparedness is now here. An electrically stabilized colloidal silver solution that can be added to both your home cabinet and preparedness pack alike. Concentrated to 30 parts per million in what has been dubbed the Survival Silver Solution. The new InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver is the answer for you and your family. And it's entirely free of toxic artificial additives that are loaded into many products. The InfoWars Life Silver Bullet Silver is so powerful that it is concentrated into a two ounce bottle and is not recommended for extended continual use. This is not a low-grade formula. We are working with one of the top laboratory manufacturers in the United States to bring you the best form of colloidal silver using electrical processes within a base of deionized water. For your preparedness storage or your home kitchen, purchase your bottle of InfoWarsLife.com Silver Bullet Colloidal Silver today and find other amazing supplements at InfoWarsLife.com. FBI agents and police turned the entire town of Armada, Michigan into a checkpoint last night. They were interrogating every single driver who tried to enter or leave the town, and they were searching for clues on the murder of April Millsap, who was found in a wooded area last week. She was murdered there. Now, after the police were done interrogating every driver, they would mark their hands with an X and basically send them on their way. But this is becoming a new norm, mass investigative detention as part of a crime investigation. Now, we had in June 2012 the bank robbery in Aurora, Colorado, where everyone within the vicinity of the bank was handcuffed. California Highway Patrol officers set up a checkpoint in Sacramento, California, after a gang member shot and injured a number of police officers, then he went into hiding, and that's where you will recognize that one infamous photo where the police officer was aiming a gun at an innocent driver's head who just happened to go through the checkpoint. Now, also during the aftermath of the Boston Marathon bombing, the entire town was shut down. Heavily armed police went door to door without search warrants, terrorizing families at gunpoint and ransacking homes. And then last year in California, during the manhunt for Christopher Dorner, police wildly shot and injured numerous innocent people. So this is what is becoming the new norm. Entire towns full of Americans are being detained to catch one guy. Meanwhile, the DHS is knowingly releasing 36,000 criminal illegal aliens back onto the streets of America just last year alone. These are criminals who committed the crimes such as rape, murders, um, multiple offenders, and they just let them go back into the streets because there's just so many other illegal aliens, such a backlog. They're like, yeah, what's, what's another criminal on the street going to hurt?